Oh, good morning, Mrs. Fef, 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 Jackson. <laughs> Uh, certainly, madam. Uh, step inside and uh, take the weight off your purse, won't you? Step in. No, he'll be up in a minute for his breakfast. Oh, don't you have any desire to wander around this wonderland of comestibles and novelties? Not really. Oh, well, you must bring your head in more often. Here you are. <laughs> we have a giant offer on baked beans at the moment. Perhaps he'd like a few baked beans with his fire lighters, would he? Oh, if you like... Uh, if you like an apple, uh, these are uh, firm. These are firm and crisp and sweet, eh? Well, of course, they, of course, they don't burn like fire lighters. <laughs> where do you want these? <laughs> I said, where do you want... Oh, wait, where's he gone now? Oh, uh, good morning. Won't give you a moment. Oh, call someone in the shop. I know it's me, you dozy idiot. <laughs> but I've been halfway down the street soliciting for, for, for customers. We don't get the normal customer anymore. Just this a series of disappearing acts. I spend my whole time uh, poking me head round the door talking to him. Where do you want these, eh? Eh? Now, you see what I'm doing now? I'm having this conversation with a cardboard box now. <laughs> Come on, my arms are getting longer. Just put them down anywhere, anywhere. Listen, Granville, pay attention to me. We've uh, got to get more of this leisure trade in here. We've got to grab the casual customer. Let me get me claws on him. And we've got to sh shift some of these apples and all, you know. They're not selling these. Not another sales drive. I want you to th think apples, Granville. Well, how else would a young man spend his adolescence? Listen, I want you to be there. totally apple motivated for the rest of the week. If someone goes out of this shop without the buying an apple, we have a tough half a failed. <laughs> That's a negative thinking, Granville. That is negative thinking, Granville. I'm <laughs> oh, so sorry. I please to beg forgiveness from honourable ancestor. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't want you blunting that sickle. Put it down. <laughs> now, listen, if you want a bit of acting, come over here. I've got a part for you. Look, take one of these apples. Now, when a customer comes into the shop, I want you to take a bite of that, you see, but, but casually, as if you didn't know the customer was here. Understand? Oh, well. Hey, now, listen, Vanessa. We don't want all that temperament. <laughs> Just a little performance is all I require. Oh. Oh. <laughs> Uh, mayor, 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 mayor. Mayor? <laughs> mayor, 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 morning. <laughs> Would you let me finish speaking, please? <laughs> Are you having treatment for that? For what? Your impediment. Oh, I haven't got an imp 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 impediment. <laughs> <laughs> the only imp impediment I've got is a him. What's that with him? I'm sick of trying to preserve a shred of emotional integrity in this crude commercial environment. Oh, is that why you're standing there talking to a shell full of puff pastry? <laughs> <laughs> what can you do with them at that age, eh? Our Eileen's girl married one of them uh, sociology graduates. Oh, but perhaps we'll try that. Uh, I want an ounce of Sweet Virginia and two packets of cigarette paper. Ounce of Sweet Virginia? Don't, don't just try to sell him something. Talk to him about his dreams and his aspirations. See, they've got the drains up again outside the slaughterhouse. <laughs> we never make any real contact. That's not what you said the other day when I switched on. You had your fingers up the light bulb socket, was it? <laughs> well, then. Here we are, sir. It says 18 and a 90, well, 100. Yeah. Thank you very much. Oh, but by the way, one of these a day keeps the doctor away. Keeps him away? Have you tried to get hold of one lately? <laughs> Impediment, as a cheeky devil. I'm fed up with all these foreigners coming up here and taking our jobs. Oh, get off. <laughs> right, come on, I want a bit of teamwork down here now, come on. Oh, I see. Got to start pulling a cart now, have I? No, 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 Dad, just take hold of that. All right, now what? I want you to bite it. It's rotten. Well, you're not practising on the good ones, are you? They're for sale. <laughs> It's got a worm in it. Well, you're not blessed with uncontrollable wild teeth, are you? 
Surely you can steer past a little bit of worm? Look, it's not a question of where it is now. One has to ask oneself what it did on the surface when it went in. <laughs> <laughs> well, let us be, be brave and face it. The first thing it did was to wipe up 48 pairs of shoes covered in earwig manure. <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 listen. For bright eyes and a glossy coat, the human body requires the occasional trace element of earwig manure, you know. No. Well, put it this way. Ha! <laughs> <laughs> Why has life always got a worm in it? Mrs. Jardine. Oh, good morning, Mr. Arkwright. Um, do you have a large cocktail biscuit? I think so, yes. <laughs> yes, how, how is Mr. Jardine? Oh, very well, thank you. Still highly thought of at the works. Oh, yes, he puts in a lot of long hours, doesn't he? This is the executive treadmill, you know. <laughs> oh, yes, fancy, fancy. And to think I knew him when he was uh, just an ordinary human being, you know. <laughs> he has done very well. Oh, amazing. And he, he used to come in here for antiperspirant just like anybody else. <laughs> Uh, we are fully expecting an invitation to the chairman's dinner this year. Oh. It's not official, you understand, but um, one here's on the grapevine. Oh, there does one. Oh, we, we still uh, use the old-fashioned telephone, rather. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Granville, I was just saying I remember uh, when Mr Jardine used to come in here, you know. You know, if you asked him the reason for his success, he would, he would purse his lips in that thoughtful manner of the uh, modern executive, and he would say very quietly in that modest way they have, uh, in case they might be wrong, Now, nah, I owe it all to apples. <laughs> oh, yes, he used to swear by apples, Mrs Jardine, didn't he, Granville? Oh, the nourishment <laughs> in that humble fruit, he used to say. Mind you, I don't suppose he'd remember that nowadays, no, if you told him, you know, not with having said so much on his grapevine. But uh, <laughs> I remember it as if it were yesterday. He used to say to me, Arkwright, he'd say, the day I stop eating apples will be the day I finish uh, for functioning as a f fully fledged of a first class executive brain. Oh, but he wears dentures now. And that will apply, he said, even when I wear dentures. <laughs> so how, how many would you like? Several? <laughs> Gladys Emanuel, and nice to see you looking so cheerful. <laughs> oh, it's you. Have you got one of them nice, big, round cottage loaves? Oh, but you have. <laughs> That'll do. All I've got is a small wrap wonder roll. Save it for me. It's yours any time you want it. <laughs> well, you know that. I've told you that before. 
Uh, speaking of that, when are you and me going to hold this year's final of the Northeastern Mouse Festival in your bedroom, eh? <laughs> Tonight, if you like. My mother's going out. The welfare people are taking her to see Oklahoma. Tonight? Yes, but you needn't get into serious training. It'll be in the front room, and if you're lucky, a bite of supper. A, 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 a bite? Food I'm talking about, not your sort. <laughs> Smarten yourself up a bit. Don't just drift over in your brown overall. I feel like being pampered. Oh, I ain't glad it's I'll pamper you all right. I'll pamper you till there's not another per pamp left in me. You see that Christmas all over again, eh? <laughs> Hang on. There's at least one more shopping day left, Arkwright. And I should get back over there. Right. I like the Christmas theme, though. I should stick to that. How do you mean? Well, if you're a wise man, you'll come bearing gifts. <laughs> <laughs> if I wasn't here right now cleaning down this bacon slicer, I'd like to be flying a jumbo jet into Kennedy Airport. Taxi up to the terminal. There'd be some fabulously wealthy American bird waiting for me in the chauffeur-driven Lincoln Continental. <laughs> I'd uh, give her a, you know, a quick wave from the cockpit. <laughs> Because I could see her there, you know, looking all wealthy, with her motor running. <laughs> She'd be waiting for me to change out of my uniform, you see, because, I mean, we couldn't, we couldn't hit the night spots, not if I'm selling me penny in bicycle clips. <laughs> you know, what this shop needs is customers of at least the three minutes full duration. I like rich birds. It's not because of the money. It's because rich birds like new cars. They always... Always in showroom condition. You see, a, sh a shop shouldn't just be a place where you go and buy things. It should be somewhere where you can you can wander around and, and relax and just to, to spend money stupidly. <laughs> Rich birds always come with all the optional extras. You know what we need here, don't you? Eh? A, a touch of self-service. Nothing too elaborate. Oh, no, we must maintain the standards of courtesy and service which have made the uh, grocery business a byword for greed. <laughs> no, what we need is just one central island here, just here, where they can well, wander around and indulge in a bit of impulse buying. <laughs> but it would have to be in Aladdin's cave. An Aladdin's cave, uh, a chock-a-block with the irresistible treasures of an advanced consumer society. Among all these irresistible treasures of an advanced consumer society, don't you think these uh, few sticks of celery are a bit limp? <laughs> well, we can, can't just cater for the leisure mad luxury trade, you know. We must provide a little bit of something for everybody. Well, you ought to appreciate that. It was always your mother's motto. <laughs> You know you're built here, don't you? You have built a little grotto for shoplifters. Huh? I mean, look, if we're up here behind the counter and they're in there, they will not only be nicking stuff wholesale, but retail. <laughs> <laughs> you reckon? Yeah, I, still, I don't know. I mean, I suppose if you're going self-service, you, it's worth risking having a few things pinched, I suppose. What are you talking about? No, 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 no. <laughs> What I mean is you've got to keep out of the way, you see. You see, you have to keep out of the way so that your customers can, can relax. Yes. I, I don't know whether to prosecute them and risk the bad publicity or just uh, uh, shoot them in the leg a bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, before you go and get your gun out, we haven't had any customers yet. Let's get it down. Come on, give no, us a come minute. on. Wait a minute. Give it a chance. Give it a chance. Well, look, they're supposed to be seized by this wild, ungovernable lust, aren't they, for things on the shelves? They're supposed to uh, just walk in and suddenly, bear ba boom 
Bare the bum? <laughs> yes! They're supposed to be seized by this ungovernable lust. I mean, it's supposed to be like a, 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 a customer trap, isn't it? I mean, they come in one minute, and next minute, they are squirming securely on the end of your turtle till. Well, look, they might be if you didn't frighten them off. I mean, you can't expect to catch them if you're breathing down their necks. I mean, you know, you just got to let them get on with it. Well, you mean uh, they turn your back on them? Yeah, that's right. Well, then, then not keep your eye on them all the time? No, well, exactly. Oh, I can't do that. Well, you're going to have to try. Hey, oh. There you are. He looks all right. Yeah, he looks like Himmler. <laughs> Good and Arbent. Yeah, come on. <laughs> well, where are you going in that? Granville, uh, uh, ring the British Embassy. <laughs> <laughs> Serves you right for being so suspicious. Well, how did I know he was a verva vicar? <laughs> he shouldn't go okay, creeping around without his collar on. He wasn't a vicar, he was a lay preacher. Sort of religious special constable. <laughs> well, he should have worn a helmet then. <laughs> That was uh, some sermon he gave me, you know. Well, serves you right. You asked for it. Look, I don't need to be told to love my neighbour, do I, when I've been unofficially engaged and a nurse Gladys Emanuel all this time? Well, look, we're only looking at the goods. And that's about as far as you're going to get with nurse Gladys Emanuel and all. <laughs> oh, well, here's a little bit of news for you, then, Reginald Bosenket. <laughs> she has just invited me over. Oh, yeah, what for? For the evening, that's what's for. And by, by the look on her, her tone of voice, she's going, she's going to remove all obstacles. Her entire gas fire will be open to me. <laughs> but she'll need coaxing with little trifles. Mm. Better take some of those out of the freezer. Those blackcurrant and walnut aren't selling very well. Look, I'm looking for something to put her on the right lines, not to freeze her points over. <laughs> Hey, I'll tell you what, I'll take her. Uh, you remember them ear muffs that we had once as a special line that never went? I'll take her uh, three pairs of them, I think. Three <laughs> pairs? And three pairs? Don't go mad. One pair's enough. Oh, one pair's enough for her ears, but uh, what about her theirs and her everywheres? <laughs> <laughs> With any luck, I might, might uh, get to put them on her. <laughs> <laughs> now, where the hangman are them muffs, then? I mean, you'll find them in the Aladdin's cave. <laughs> Around a tin of cream undercoat. Oh, thank you, uh, Widow Twanky. <laughs> I uh, don't think I can uh, put up with this self-service much longer, you know. It's, it's uh, such a strain on your nerves. I oh, know, it's a strain on your customers' nerves and all, especially when you leap out the middle there going, where are you go, 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 going with that? <laughs> That's only my bit of fun. Rubbish. Listen, I'm not going to leave the customers alone with a stock. It's like a hiring your wife out for parties. <laughs> yeah, do people do that? No, of course it... Hey, that's a good, not a bad idea, is it, though, eh? There must be a bigger profit margin in it than groceries. <laughs> <laughs> uh, pound for pound, I mean. <laughs> hey, don't you hate the days when you're dead tread on a Swiss roll? <laughs> oh, dear. Hey, well, what about these? What do you think? No? <laughs> Oh, hello there, Nurse Gladys. Have you come for your wonder roll? Perhaps you'd prefer a Swiss roll, would you? Look at that, you see. Special new design to enable you to send it, send it through the post. <laughs> oh, 
Well, perhaps you would prefer a nice ice, 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 a nice ice, ice, ice bun, would you? I want a step ladder. Oh, my God, God, you must be hungry. <laughs> Granville, go and pick out a nice uh, tender stepladder for Nurse Gladys, would you? I'm not buying it, you great Tom fool. I want to borrow it. I've locked myself out. Oh, dear. How fortunate. <laughs> I might have known I'd get a lot of sympathy from you, Arkwright. <laughs> Look, what's all this? Oh, this is the new uh, self-service department, my lot. Oh, I thought you'd been taken over by war on want. <laughs> <laughs> Private love. Can you come over and give me a hand to get in the window? Oh, we'll, we, we'll both come over. Then he can hold the ladder and I can uh, give you a bunk up, can't I? <laughs> this is all we've got. Will these do? Yes, anything will do. Come on, let's get started. Time's money, isn't it? Let's get over there. I think I'd feel safer if you stayed on your own side of the street whilst I'm climbing in the window. Thank oh. you. Oh. I don't want to feel your hot breath steaming up with double glazing. <laughs> I hope and trust that that won't apply to our rendezvous tonight. I mean, that's still on, isn't it? If I ever get back in the house... Yes. Hey, why bother? Why bother? Why don't you move into my spare room upstairs? I assure you that the rent would be nominal. <laughs> don't you mean phenomenal? <laughs> <laughs> He's doing that all the time now, leaving bits off words. You should have heard what he called Constable Bottomley the other day. <laughs> hey, 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 you just keep your mouth shut. Go and wash it out with a quick drying cement at once. <laughs> No, seriously, Gladys, why don't you become my fully furnished tenant, eh? I can promise you every comfort. I have a feeling the price might be a bit high. Oh, no, no, no. Two pounds a week, and I, I wouldn't want much down. For two pounds a week, you wouldn't be getting anything down. <laughs> Come on, Granville. Listen, you could have pay in kind. Oh, yes, what kind of kind? Oh, any kind of kind you're kind enough to offer. <laughs> Listen, I don't want that stepladder shop soil. Do you understand? Will you try and you just step on every other rung? It's a good job Romeo didn't have you for an uncle. He would have never reached that balcony. Listen, <laughs> listen. They cost money, these things. All right, I'll tell you what I'll do, shall I? I shall go up these steps backwards on my hands and open the window with my feet. And if anybody asks me what I'm doing, I shall say that I'm a passing Australian just looking up a relative. <laughs> Uh, uh, down a bit. How far? I'll, I'll tell you when to stop. Stop! <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you stop when I tell you to stop? <laughs> now, uh, just take it up a bit again, will you? Come on, up, up, and no, no, not too far. You just no, the, the, no, you missed it. You take right, up a bit there. No, no, that, that's it. They're tied up about there, yes. Yeah. You like a man who knows his own mind. <laughs> that's good, that. That's very good, that. Well, I'm glad you're happy about it. Oh, it means I can stand here smiling and still keep an eye on the thieving articles. Yeah, it means that I'm without a wardrobe door. But surely that's a small sacrifice, isn't it? Yes. For the security? I know. It may be small for you. you still got your wardrobe door. Oh, I can't give up my door. Oh, no, it must be available at all times for the garments of Gladys Emanuel. <laughs> so should she move in? What, into your wardrobe? <laughs> Into my well, wedlock. <clears throat> and meanwhile, I'm open for moths in my mohairs. <laughs> no, that conjures up a very nasty picture. Come over here. Come on. Oh, no, not again. What do you mean again? You haven't even started. Now, come on. I want to try and hear how you bite that. Now, let's have some expression. Put a bit of zip into it. I've got a zip in my mohairs, but that's not going to stop the moths getting in and having a ball. <laughs> <laughs> Would you just take a bite out of that before your mouth gets you into trouble, please? <laughs> Have you started yet? Oh. Yes! Well, louder, louder. Any particular key? No, any old key, just a loud key. <laughs> oh, that's better. <laughs> that's a bit better. Yes, now try, try and look as if you're enjoying it, would you? <laughs> they're sour. No, they're not sour. Oh, no. No, in the trade, they're known as mouth-watering. <laughs> With the mouth, they're known as eye watering. <laughs> For fruity and mouth watering, have you got that? And try and look a bit more pleasant, please. Pleasant? Pleasant is me who's got to eat the grubby sour little apples. Now, simmer down, Granville. Uh, it's me who's wondering about consuming earwig manure. Yeah, don't lose your call, Granville. It doesn't look as if Shirley Bassey is ever going to answer my letter. <laughs> Now, what we need, you know, is a little slogan for the window. Nothing too elaborate. Just a few uh, golden phrases or two. Now, come on, think. I want a rise. Don't be dirty. <laughs> 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 I 
That's a, a, a disgusting thing to say. Your language is, is getting atrocious these days. You... Why are you writing to Shirley Bassey? Cos I've finished with Julie Andrews. <laughs> Ah, yes. Uh, are you looking for some medication? Oh, good afternoon. I'm looking for some medication. <laughs> I'm, I'm afraid that's our full selection. Uh, is this your full selection? <laughs> <laughs> we, we don't carry a lot these days. I suppose you don't carry a lot these days. <laughs> I'm wasting my time. He's clairvoyant. <laughs> I'm looking for something I can use for wax in the ears. I don't think you need anything. You're uh, deaf as it is. <laughs> I'm afraid it makes me a little deaf. Yes, it's the wax in your ears doing that. <laughs> you have nothing for it, I see. Apples. <laughs> Pardon? Apples. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I could have sworn you said apples. <laughs> no, louder, louder. <laughs> louder. Well, it's not usually a powder. It's, it's usually in a bottle with a rubber dropper. Oh, dear. Poor lad. You'd better serve this young man first. He needs something more than I do. Oh, you're going to go get something the minute you turn your back and all. <laughs> you deaf old twit. <laughs> These instant chips take longer than ordinary ones. <laughs> you won't be wanting anything when you're coming tonight, will you? No, no, I shall be having everything I want over there with any luck. <laughs> <laughs> Touch wooden whistle. No, I shall come back from Nurse Gladys Emanuel's a, a thoroughly replete. Replete? Sounds like you've been eating Chinese radishes. <laughs> <laughs> replete. So satisfied. Don't you know any big words? Have you gleaned nothing from the rich harvest of knowledge available to you on the back of the cornflake packets? <laughs> <laughs> now, where's my little present? Are you going to take her chocolates? No, no. No, I've got something special, Granville. Something primeval, if you like. The first gift ever exchanged in love between a man and a woman, stretching across the centuries to the dawn of time. What do you mean? I don't... Get out! Oh, Come on, clear off, you stingy devil! <laughs> this is what we gave Adam. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what this Eve's going to do. She's going to heave them right back at you. <laughs> oh, get off! Get off it. Granville, fetch a box. <laughs> That's central display is coming down tomorrow. Enough's enough. The run free tights with a special offer on the back will be tucked away where they belong. Next to the meat paste. <laughs> Them apples will get sold eventually, I suppose. They'll just go soft, that's all. Well, after all, that's life, isn't it? To Elvis, her self-service, I say. Tomorrow we start with a new motto. God help those who help themselves. 